Whether you call it New York strip steak or a Delmonico, today we're talking about beef strip steaks and how you can ensure you get the perfect cook whenever you light the grill. We're gonna show you two methods you can use to cook a strip steak, regardless if you're using a gas, charcoal, or a pellet grill, and the surefire hack you can use to make sure it's fork tender every time. I love a good New York strip steak, and it's one of my favorite go-to steaks when we're entertaining friends here at the Barbecue Lab. It took me a good share of cooks to get to the point where I'm confident cooking a strip steak, so I'm gonna show you two ways that I've learned to cook them to make sure your strip always turns out perfect. First, let's start with how to pick the best strip steak when you're at the local butcher or grocery store. Our grocery store here locally is a Kroger here in town, and they had this family pack of strip steaks on sale for about $7.99 a pound. There were plenty of packs to choose from, but I want to show you a little secret to picking the best strip steaks in the grocery store. First, you wanna make sure the marbling is the best you can find. Now, the marbling is the intermuscular fat that you see in the meat, and that's what keeps it juicy once it's cooked. As you can see here, these steaks have some pretty amazing marbling for choice steaks, so I was really happy with this package for the price. Now the second thing is, see this top steak here? This steak has a little portion of the steak that looks different than the rest, and that's because not all of this steak is strip steak. This top portion is a sirloin steak, and that's why the color is different on this part of the steak. Now there's nothing wrong with this steak, but you're just paying strip steak prices for sirloin steak, and I'd rather spend my strip steak money on strip steak, not sirloin. So be on the lookout for this when you see pre-packaged strip steaks in the supermarket. And if you're into grilling and outdoor cooking, please consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and it supports our family of outdoor cooking enthusiasts. So let us help you raise your outdoor cooking game by hitting the notification icon so you don't miss out on future videos. It's time to fire up the grill, and today I'm going to be using the American Renaissance gas grill that we built into our outdoor kitchen. We built this patio, kitchen, and pavilion in 2020, and we use it all the time here on the channel. There's even a video on how we built this outdoor kitchen ourselves, and I'll link that video up here in the card and put a link in the description below. Now, the ARG grill has three knobs on the front to control the flame, and when I light it up, I can have it to a grilling temperature of 700 degrees Fahrenheit in about five minutes. Now, these steaks we're cooking today, we picked up from Costco. They're prime grade steaks, and we had a chance to see the difference between choice and prime in store, and it was a huge difference in marbling. Even though these steaks look good, strip can be a stringy cut, so when it comes to making sure you get a tender steak every time, I turn to my jacquard. If you've never seen one before, this device helps tenderize pieces of meat by inserting tiny little blades to cut the connective tissue and tough strands of meat. What I love is that you can't even tell that you've used it once you're done cooking, so here's how it works. I just run the jacquard over the piece of meat from one side to the other and then push the steak back together since the jacquard will flatten it out a little bit. Now when we grill it, the tough strands have been cut and it will result in a steak that's much more tender when we're done. Now you've got to give one of these a try. They're only about $20 to $30 and they're a piece of gear that I use all the time with inexpensive steaks and tougher cuts of meat on the grill. I'll leave a link below to my favorite jacquard and you can amaze your friends with the most tender strip steak they've ever had. All right, we're out here in the outdoor kitchen and we have already tenderized the strip steak. Now we have to address the question of seasoning. Now, traditionally, I really love Smoke Bros Point Man as my steak seasoning. But what I find is no matter what seasoning I use, other than just salt, it tends to burn on a high heat cook like what we're doing today. So my go-to is a standard salt application up to my steak before we put it on the grill. Now this is the hex clad salt, salt uh, grinder. Love this thing. We've got it filled with Himalayan pink salt. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get on here and give it a healthy dose of salt before we put this thing on the grill. Both sides, pat it in, cinch it up together just like we had it and go ahead and both sides of salt. So what's the first method we're cooking with today? This we like to call the 90 second method. 
We're shooting for a temperature on the grill of about 550 degrees. And our goal is to be able to do 90 seconds and then turn it, then 90 seconds, then flip it, then 90 seconds, then turn it, then 90 seconds and pull it off. Now, the thing is, is that everybody wants to know what's the time, what's the time? How long does it take to cook this? Almost every good barbecue or grilling professional is gonna tell you it's not time, it's temperature. And that's what we're gonna to do today. We're going to cook to temperature and I wanna take this steak to about 125, 130 degrees because I want it to end in a medium rare steak. Now, that means that we're going to keep an eye on this thing as we cook it, but the first 90 seconds, 90 seconds, the third 90 seconds, all three of those, they're gonna go, and I don't even need to temp it until that last turn. I wanna know what it is, so I know whether we're gonna go a little bit longer or shorter than 90 seconds on that last turn. So that's the method. Let's head over to the grill and get the steak on. All right, so the grill, running right around 550 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and temp these grates using our Thermalworks infrared gun. And if you look right there, our grates are running probably 640, 650 degrees. So they are ripe for a really, really good sear. Now, the thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and make sure I hit my grates with a little bit of duck fat to give it a little bit of lubrication so the steak doesn't stick. But let's go right here in the center and let's go ahead and lubricate this. I wanna make sure I don't get burned. So I'll step back a little bit. But you can tell that that is hopping. All right. <clears throat> Here we have our steak. We're gonna go ahead and take it, put it on on a bias. The grill, grill grates are running this way. We wanna put the steak on first, like this. Ready? Here we go. Press it down into the grates, just like that. And we're gonna let that go for 90 seconds. Here's our timer. 90 seconds, and we'll see you in a sec. All right, our alarm's going off. Go ahead and check that, open up. Now remember, all we wanna do here is put the twist on it. It's running this way. We wanna go over here with the grates. Make sure I have a little bit of duck fat down there. We're gonna pick our steak up and we're just gonna come over here and run it this way. Press it down into the grate. Set our timer. 90 seconds and here we go put this on and we'll see you here in just a second all right timer is done on this side we're gonna go ahead and check out our steak there we are now let's go ahead and put it back on the other side and this is where we get to see the presentation side for the first time since we started this cook ready here we go Some lovely crosshatch marks on this thing. That thing looks beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and put 90 seconds on the clock. We're gonna start our clock back up. And then we have side two. Now here's where people ask the question, well, don't you wanna know what the temperature is? Well, sure. Let's go ahead and stick this in there. We're at about 10, ouch, 104. It is hot, I'm telling you. One, about 108, 104, somewhere in there. So we have the presentation side done. Since the presentation side is done, we're gonna plan 90 seconds and 90 seconds on the second side, but the presentation side, done. People aren't gonna be constantly flipping their steaks over on their plate. So you've got the hash marks, which is all you need. We're good on that, but we're gonna go ahead and keep it there 90 seconds using our thermometer to tell us when we're done all the way through. All right, here's where we are on our next rotation. The whole goal here is just rotate it to the other side. Ready? We're gonna take it. Rotate it there so we have hash marks on that second side. This is where we really care what the temperatures are starting to look like. So let's get in there. Okay, 107, 106 is where I'm looking. So we're shooting for a nice medium rare by the time this thing is done. So let's go ahead and get this back in there. Set our timer for 90 seconds, hit start. But remember, we're hitting for a medium rare. So what I'm gonna put up on the screen here is the steak doneness guide. The steak doneness guide will tell where you wanna be. Know that I'm shooting to pull this off between 125 and 130. Now, if I'm under when I get done with this, second, this last turn at 90, at 90 seconds, if I'm under temperature, I could just leave it exactly where it is 
or if you want to, you could move it anywhere else on the grill because the whole point is presentation side is done. All we're trying to do is finish the steak off. One method you could use is turning one of the burners way down and letting this cook indirectly to finish. That's something you could do, but I think on a steak like this, we're gonna find right exactly where we need to be, probably at that last 90 seconds, maybe 120 seconds at the end of this cook. So here we go. Okay, so we are through our 90 seconds all the way around. Let's see where we are on the steak. Now, it's super hot, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lift up the steak with this to temp it, get a good temperature on it so I don't burn myself. All right, so let's go in here. One twenty three, one twenty two. We are almost there, gang. So this is really close to where I want it to be. I'm gonna set it back down. I'm just gonna give it another 30, 45 seconds. Let it finish coming up to that right around 125 that I'm looking for. And then once we've hit that, we're gonna take it back over to the cutting board. We're gonna rest it with some butter on top, put a little bit of steak seasoning on it, and this is gonna be delicious. All right, so we got the picture. You can see the picture as probably what was the hero image for this. We got it right at 125. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off and we're gonna take it over to the cutting board and we're gonna rest the steak. So <clears throat> I like to use these little trays, which is what we use for transporting barbecue. So I'm gonna grab our steak, put it on my tray, and we're gonna head over to the cutting board, put a little seasoning on it and butter, and we're off to the races. All right, <clears throat> we have our steak. It has come off, it's at 125. We wanna go ahead and rest it, but before we do, now you could do a compound butter, you could do almost any kind of butter you want on this thing, but before we butter it, I wanna put some seasoning on it. Now remember, we already salted it, but I love this Point Man seasoning from Smoke Bros. I put a nice little coat on here of that and let this sink in for some flavor. And I also really like some fresh cracked black pepper. I'm gonna put that on top as well. So <clears throat> I have some seasonings on there. I wanna take some nice grass fed butter. This has been in the fridge and the freezer. It is nice and cold to sit on top. I'm gonna go ahead and take some aluminum foil and we're gonna tent our foil over the top. So people ask me all the time, how long do I let my steak rest? Well, that's a great question with a little bit more complicated answer than just a simple, here's the time. Uh, on a minimum side, I'd say five minutes. I wouldn't, less, I wouldn't let my steak rest any less than five minutes. Now on the maximum side, I think 15, 20 minutes is probably the maximum I'd wanna go since we're talking about a smaller cut of steak that doesn't need to reabsorb juices like brisket or pork butt or something like that. So I think the magic number is 10 to 15 minutes. So what I would do is with this steak, I'm just gonna go set a timer on my Thermalworks Big and Loud timer, which is the one that we use all the time here around the lab. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in that. But I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. We'll come right back here, cut it up. This is gonna be delicious. All right, our 10 minutes is up. Let's see how we did. Come on in here, camera. It is rested, it has reabsorbed those juices. Our butter is almost all the way melted. Now it's time to go ahead and slice it up. Now, those juices I'm coming back here for in a minute, but <clears throat> I'll go ahead and take this off. This can be pitmaster privilege. Let's go ahead and cut some shingles with this guy. And I don't know about you, but that is, that is a good looking strip steak. Now, here's the thing. Is it still completely medium rare? Mm, debatable. I'm gonna guess this is probably more of a medium, but uh, if I'm gonna be honest with the camera, that is what happens when you shoot for YouTube and you shoot for videos and you're trying to get a perfect shot on your camera of the perfect temperature, and then you have to get a hero shot and you have to get video. It's, I, I'm just telling you, hitting your temperatures with video it's just hard, so we do our best, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a delicious steak. So, what do you say, Mel? Should we try it? Yes, please. Mm. 
for the camera person. And for me. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Other than the fact... <laughs> Would you like more? <laughs> I don't know what to say other than the fact that that's a delicious strip steak. And the nice thing is the strip steaks can be stringy. They can be stringy from time to time. But using that guillotine or the... What's it called? Jacquard. Yeah. But using that jacquard makes it so that this is easy to chew. It's easy to bite. Uh, this is a fantastic way to cook strip steak, but it's not the only one we're teaching you today. So this is a great way, but if you want to learn another way, let's go on to method two. All right, some people might ask, why in the world are you cutting that fat off? Fat is flavor. You're right, fat is flavor. But when you cook a high heat cooking method and you get too much fat, what you're gonna have is flare ups and flare ups uh, will ruin a good steak cook. So what I like to do is take off some of this hard fat around the sides and basically give the steak a better chance of not flaring up all the way around. And that's what I'm doing here. All right, so method two. This is our strip steak that we're gonna use this time around. The same exact thing. I'm just gonna season it with just some nice salt. So I'm not going for anything crazy. Whoops. <clears throat> I'm not going for anything crazy. I'm just going for a nice, decent layer of salt all the way over using this hex clad salt grinder, <clears throat> which is quite nice. I like that quite a bit. A little bit more on here. Some people might be like, oh, it's way too much salt. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just gonna tell you on a steak that's this size, that's probably the right amount of salt for this thing. Now, <clears throat> remember, I am not going to put on my steak seasoning yet. I'm not going to put on black pepper yet. I don't want to burn it. But this method that we're going to do now, this is made popular by Jess Pryles. This is called the Just Keep Flipping Method. I love this method because it's up to you to keep your eye on it. You can watch for flare ups, you can watch for temperatures, you can watch for whatever. And we're going to try to get a crust across the entirety of this meat. And the whole point is we're not going to go for grill marks. We're going to try to go for a good crust. We're just going to keep exposing it to the heat all the way around until we hit that temperature that we're aiming for. So let's head over to the grill. Fire it up. All right, the grill is ready. We're sitting between 550 and 600 degrees, so it's exactly where I want it. The steak is ready, except I need one more thing. Remember last time we did this, we took some duck fat to the grill grates. This time I'm gonna take a little bit of duck fat and I'm gonna put it right on the steak itself. The salt is already on there. I'm just gonna hit it with this, give it a little bit of liquid on the outside, flip it over. Same thing here. <clears throat> and then we take this, place it on the grill. It doesn't really matter where we want to put this on the grill, because remember, we're going to keep flipping this as we go. So a little bit of duck fat on the grates. And I'm going to take this, smack on the grates. Now, the whole point of just keep flipping is we want to do this for about every 30-ish seconds, we're going to flip this steak. Now, we could time this out if you want, but let's go ahead and say for the sake of time, that we're gonna take 30 seconds on our timer and we're gonna set our steak to go. But the whole point of this really is you wanna keep this steak moving. If you get to the point where you're like, ah, oh, should I flip it? Go ahead and flip it, no big deal. No harm, no foul. If I'm looking at here, I've got 15 seconds left on the timer. The question is, did I start it right at 30 seconds? Probably not, I'm a little bit late. So eight seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I'm gonna flip it, put it over here. Now you might say, Wow, those steak marks don't look amazing. Uh, you have some grill marks on there, but they're not great grill marks because you didn't leave it long enough. Well, that's the point of the just keep flipping method. We're gonna flip it about every 30 seconds and we're gonna continue to build that crust all the way around the steak. So 15 seconds in here, let's let it keep going for a few more seconds. We're gonna flip it again. And one of the things we'll do here in a little bit is we'll even flip it on the sides and get the sides a little bit of crust as well. So has it been 30 seconds? Probably. Let's take it, flip it over there. Different section of the grill, hot grates. Our goal is we're gonna get some grates that are gonna give us marks on the outside. Plus as well, we're going for just heat hitting the outside of the steak. Now someone's inevitably gonna ask, how long does this take? 
Well, that's a great question. I mean, we're at the same temperature that we did for our 90 second method. So if our 90 second method was 90 times four, then you have to look at it and say, we're talking about what, 360 seconds? So 360 seconds, take that out, divide that by 60, you have what, six minutes, seven minutes, somewhere around there, probably 30 seconds again. Let's flip, new section of the grill. Look, we're just getting some pretty stellar color right in here. You may not be able to see it. I'm gonna start moving it towards the front of the grill so Melissa can get it. But we're starting to get some good color on this, which is what we're looking for. I'm gonna start trying to vary up the grill marks a little bit, even though it's not gonna be all grill marks that we're going for. We're just going for a good sear all the way around. But this method is really pretty simple. Uh, if you ask yourself, can I flip it? Sure, go ahead. That's looking pretty good. But we're, good, we're developing this golden brown all the way through with these grill marks and with the crust that we're going to be developing on this. I think you guys are gonna love this method. Now, the question is, should I keep talking the entire time we cook the steak for six minutes? Uh, Melissa is looking at me and laughing as if I don't think he should, but we could totally try it and see if you guys are going to completely roast me in the comments below. So why didn't we put the grill seasoning on here? Why didn't we put the steak seasoning on the top of this steak? Wouldn't it be nice if that got a little toasty flavor? Maybe. But what I find is that oftentimes that grill seasoning, that lovely steak seasoning, just burns. And it burns and gets bitter. That's one of the things I like about the Just Keep Flipping method. You're not really adding bitter flavor to the steak. You're just adding lovely, nice crust. Now, if you really want to get a dynamite crust, you could turn the grill all the way up towards the end and really try to crisp this up. But I think the nice thing about the Just Keep Flipping method is that you just flip it until you've got a crust that you like and a temperature that you're in love with. So people might also ask, why haven't you tempt this yet? Well, I could tempt this, but I can tell you based on the meat right here, this is nowhere near done if you look right here. So we've got a good couple minutes left. I don't need to take a thermometer to that to tell you that the middle of that is still raw, not rare. So we're just gonna keep on flipping. What's this, flip number eight? All right, flip number nine. Flip number 10, closer to the camera so we can see it. Flip number 11. All right, flip number 12. All right, we're at flip number 13, but what I wanna do is I wanna get an idea of where my internal temperature is. So I'm just gonna take my probe, I'm gonna stick it into the side here of my steak. We're sitting at 113 right now. So <clears throat> there's our next flip. All right, flip number 14. Flip number 15. Now, as we're getting closer here, and I know we're getting closer, I want to make sure I get a little bit of the sides. So let's go ahead and take this and let's temp it. Let's have an idea of where we're going to be. 111, 112, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to go ahead and try to get the sides of a little bit of crust. So just take that, hold it above the flame with the tongs. And for this, I think I might even take the grill and turn it up just a smidge to get myself a little bit more of a sear on the sides here. Notice as I do that, it starts to actually liquefy the fat. So we're, at the, we're in the danger zone of potentially having a flare up because we're inviting fire to fat. But that's okay because I wanna actually get that fat, a nice char on the side on this cook. Look at that, looks like fireworks on the bottom there. But that's what's nice is you can give it some nice color. And then on the flip side. Don't forget the edges. All right, let's check our, check our temperature again. There we go, 125. That is what I'm looking for. I wanna pull this thing off and we are going to rest this thing. All right, so we, here we are, we got our picture. Hopefully we still have our medium rare 
putting it on the black tray. Black tray means done meat. Red tray means raw meat. And let's head over, let's get this on the cutting board. All right, we have our steak. It's off the grill, ready to rest. We're gonna take a little bit of our grass-fed butter, put it on top, if I can get it on top. There we go. <clears throat> now, that tells me I forgot a step. Before I put the butter on, I'm supposed to put on the seasonings. So, here we go. Little point man, like we talked about earlier. One of my favorite steak seasonings. <clears throat> and then we have our fresh, cracked black pepper on top. Oh, that's gonna be good. Then our butter. Then we take our foil. And we're gonna wrap this thing up in foil and give it our 10 minute rest. So that is the just keep flipping method. And we will see you in 10 minutes to show you what it looks like. All right, our 10 minutes is up. And here is our just keep flipping steak. I don't know about you, but that sure looks good to me. And I get to taste it. So sorry, YouTube. All right, <clears throat> this little nub right here. I like to take this. This is the one that we eat. And this is what we serve everybody else usually. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Let's cut it in half, see how we did. Man, it's a little over. Medium rare, I don't know, probably medium rare. Medium-ish, yeah, somewhere in there. But I gotta tell you, Look at that juice, it's gonna be delicious. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's give it a few bites of this thing. Oh man, that cuts so easy. Something like that. The butter is already on there, making it look awesome. But once you have your shingles figured out, the secret sauce is you take your extra butter from your plate, your extra juices from your plate, drizzle it right on top any extra butter, you can add it now. This is the time to put that love back on your steak. All right, so the moment of truth. <laughs> truth? How do you say truth? The truth, moment of truth. <clears throat> time to get a bite. For the camera person. Bite for the griller. Here we go. As, uh, as Google would say, cheers everybody. <laughs> It's so beefy. There's such a great beef flavor in that. <clears throat> I get the butter that's on top. I get a little bit of that steak seasoning coming through with a little bit of hint of some garlic, maybe onion, but the fresh cracked pepper on top. Oh man, that's dynamite. That is fantastic. And it is tender. So if you look at the steak, usually with a piece of steak like this, you couldn't pull it apart if you tried. But the thing about this steak since we've used the jacquard, I can pull it apart. How many pieces of steak can you pull apart like that? Just because of that jacquard, what it did, it's magic, what you can do with this thing. All right, so we are about to have dinner. This is gonna be fantastic. I love strip steak cooked this way. And I just wanna share this video with you. I hope this is helpful for you. And um, before we go, I have Uno, our barbecue lab, the dog. If you haven't met him, this is Uno. He does a great job supporting us around here. He keeps asking me why I can't be more like Bradley Robinson and actually share with his dog at the end. So here's the official taste test for the barbecue lab. To see how we did. Ready? That's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Bradley. So that has been Grill Basics. This is the strip steak. I'm David Gafford. Behind the camera is Melissa Gafford. We are the Barbecue Lab and we make videos just like this to help you improve your backyard cooking game. So if you like anything you've seen in this video, you wanna check out this knife, this Dow Strong Omega Series steak knife. We'll put that link in the description below. If you wanna get a thermopin, if you don't have an instant read to be able to cook and check your temperatures in your steaks, we'll put that below. If you like the salt grinder, we've got all these kind of things that we have tested and we love here in outdoor cooking. And we keep all of that right here down in the description as well as on our webpage over at thebarbecuelab.com forward slash shop. Our shop page exists for you to be able to find the best in outdoor cooking and barbecue so that you don't have to guess at what's gonna be good and what are the things that you're gonna return that you don't like. We do the testing for you. That's what we're all about here at The Barbecue Lab, helping you get better and run the test so you know how to buy the right thing. If you're doing any shopping online on Amazon at all this holiday season, consider checking out The Barbecue Lab Amazon storefront. It's just amazon.com forward slash shop 
forward slash the barbecue lab. We'll put a link down below so you can find it in the description. But we have all of these things you can get on Amazon down there. And if you do your holiday shopping using any one of our links, we'll actually get a commission for what you make a purchase of. It's a great way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything more. Amazon just gives us a small percentage of what your purchase price was already going to be if you just click one of our links first before you make a purchase. So I wanna say thanks for supporting us. We've got some great things planned. I can't wait to share them with you. But for now, get out, buy some strip steak, and go out there and make some amazing, amazing grilled food. Now remember, one of the secrets to this whole thing is that jacquard. We have a link below for that too. Do that. Don't even show people what it is if you don't want, and you make the most tender steaks in the neighborhood. You don't even have to tell them that we told you. All right? It can be our secret. But thanks so much for joining us here at the Barbecue Lab. I'm David. This is Melissa behind the camera, and we can't wait to see you next time.